Welcome. Now that you have created the waterfall content type, the next step is to add fields to it. Recall, fields take care of storing, loading, editing, and rendering custom data. It is important to do the work of this video. Follow along to manage the fields of the waterfall content type. If you're not already on this page, in the admin toolbar, hover over Structure, Content Types, Waterfall, then click on Manage Fields. You'll see that by default, new content types come with one field called body. It has a label of body, its machine name is body, all lowercase, and the field type of body is text. Notice the text allows long entry that can be HTML formatted. And with summary means this field allows content authors to input a summary text if needed. We'll learn more about this field type as we go along. For now, let's change the label from body to waterfall description. Remember that at any point in this video, you can pause and rewind the instructions if you need to. Change the label of the body by clicking on edit under operations. Here in label, change it from body to waterfall description. For help text, let's enter something encouraging such as describe the waterfall as beautifully as you can. Notice that you can choose to allow summary input on this field if you wish. As it says, summary text is explicitly shown instead of automatically trimmed text when appropriate. The other options, such as required field and required summary are self-explanatory. A waterfall description is pretty essential to a waterfall, so let's choose to require this waterfall description field by selecting required field. After you have updated the body field as demonstrated, near the bottom of the page, click save settings. Nice! For the rest of the video, we are going to add nearly all of the other fields which make up the waterfall content type. These other fields are listed in the asset directory. Visit Unit 5, then click on Content Type Waterfall Content Type Fields. In this video, we will add the first set of fields. As you are aware, we have already configured the body field to have a label of waterfall description. In this video, we will not add the media field and we will not add the taxonomy fields because we will go over these concepts and field types in much detail later. Focusing back on the first set of fields up here, keep in mind that the field defaults will usually be sufficient if you are familiar with the fields concept and if you're keen on breezing through adding these fields. Note that the waterfall image is using an already existing image underscore field, and it has a minimum upload resolution of 500 by 500 pixels. I've also provided a suffix for the hike duration and the waterfall height fields. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's begin adding these fields starting with the official website. Since I am already here in the asset directory, I'll copy the label text official website. Next. In the Manage Field page for Waterfall, follow along and click on Add Field. Since we have not created a link before, click on Select a Field Type under Add a New Field. Each one of these field types listed here is provided by a module. Most of these are core modules. Actually, all of them are core modules. Official website is of the field type link listed under the general category. Select link and notice that a label text box appears. The label for this field is official website, text which I had copied from the asset directory and will paste here. Notice that when I paste the text or type the text, a machine name is automatically generated for us. The machine name of the field is field underscore official underscore website all lowercase by convention. 
pay attention to any white space in the field label as white space is converted to an underscore in the machine name. See here, at the machine name there is a trailing underscore, which means somehow white space was entered into the label there. It's a quick fix. Just go to the label text, find any unnecessary white space, and delete it. Once you are satisfied with the new field type, its label, and its machine name, click Save and Continue. This brings us to the default field settings configuration page. Every field has default field settings, and the exact settings will be different depending on the field type. Pay attention to what it says here. These settings apply to the field everywhere it is used. These settings impact the way that data is stored in the database, and it cannot be changed once data has been created. As you get experience with adding fields, you'll be able to architect your needed data structures with ease. For us, it makes sense that we only need one official website link per waterfall, so keep it as its default one. For investigation purposes, we can see that we could also select unlimited links if we needed to. Keep the default to limited to one, then click on Save Field Settings. Next, we are given the ability to change how the field is presented to content editors. We can change the field label if necessary. Let's again enter some help text. Referring back to the asset directory, I'll copy paste, if known, link to an external official website for the waterfall. With link field types, you can configure allowed link types to be only internal, or only external, or both styles of links. Because we expect content editors to link to external websites, choose external links only. If you want, you can also let content editors enter in link text, which will be displayed, instead of the URL. In our case, we do not need link text, so let's select Disable. Just a reminder to pause or rewind the video anytime you need to. Great, when you are completed, scroll down and click Save Settings. Woohoo! If we ever need to adjust the field settings again, you can do so by clicking on the drop down of the field and select either Edit or Storage Settings. Continuing on, referring to the asset directory, let's now add the waterfall image. Back at our Drupal site, click on Add Field. For comparison purposes, this time, we are going to choose to reuse an existing field. Click on Select an Existing Field and choose Image, Field underscore Image. This field is also used on the article content type and it defaults to having a label of image. For us, we want the label to be Waterfall Image. Notice this time, a field machine name is not automatically generated for us. This is because the field has been previously created elsewhere and the machine name is already established as field underscore image. When you are ready, click Save and Continue. This time, we are presented directly with the content editor settings and we bypassed the field settings. Let's click on Field Settings tab to investigate. Under the Field Settings tab, we are presented with a warning message that states that there is data in this field in the database. The field settings can no longer be changed. Since we are reusing the field underscore image created on the article content type, and since we already created the Who Doesn't Like a Good Waterfall article uploaded with the rainbow image, we cannot make changes to the global field settings now. This is a good demonstration and reminder to always think through your data model because it may be cumbersome and inconvenient to make changes to it. Thankfully, these global field settings are fine for our purposes. So let's head back over to the Edit tab to configure the Content Editor settings. Let's copy over the help text. This is a suggestion for the smallest image size that can be uploaded. 
It is important to prevent images from being too small because, as we'll learn later, with image styles and effects, Drupal can scale and crop uploaded images. If the uploaded image is too small, then scaled images turn out to be pixelated. We prevent that from happening with the following settings. Moving past the default image option, which is shown if no image is uploaded, we arrive at the allowed file extensions. Drupal provides sensible defaults, so let's keep them. Then we come to the file directory. Although we don't have to, you are doing yourself and your team a favor by organizing uploaded files. Let's tell Drupal to create a new directory at images waterfall. This directory is where Drupal will upload any waterfall images The next option is a maximum image resolution. Typically, because with Drupal image styles and effects, we can control the specific size of the displayed image, I usually do not limit a maximum resolution. It is much more effective to prevent images which are too small from being uploaded. We can limit small images by entering a minimum resolution. Although the actual resolution will be determined by your design team, for us, let's enter 500 pixels wide and 500 pixels high as the minimum resolution. Next, we can limit how large the file size of the uploaded file can be. This is always a good idea. Let's enter 64 MB for 64 megabytes. Then we are presented with accessibility options and by default, Drupal enables an image alt field and sets it to required. It's a decent thing to do, so keep the alt field defaults. Okay, when you're ready, click save settings. Super, we have just configured an existing field for use with our waterfall content type. According to the asset directory, the next field to add is the hike duration field and it is of number integer type. Back at the Drupal site, click add field. Carefully choose number integer field type under the number category. Enter hike duration as the field label. Be mindful of any trailing white space. Click save and continue when you are finished. Let's keep the default limited to one hike duration. Save field settings. Once we're on the content editor settings for the field, let's make a small change to the field label. Go ahead and at the end of the field label, Enter parentheses, minutes, clothing parentheses, like so. We make this small change to the label now after we have established the machine name for the field. Otherwise, this minutes text would have been reflected into the machine name. And although that wouldn't be wrong, it is more elegant, in my opinion, to keep machine names simple. Next. I'll copy and paste the help text. And although we could leave the rest of the options blank, for demonstration purposes, in the suffix option, let's enter the text of minutes. When we start creating waterfall content, we'll see the effects of this setting. At this time, we are finished with the hike duration field. Click Save Settings. Excellent. We have just added the hike duration field. Next, let's add the walking and driving instruction field. It's a text formatted long field. This should be familiar by now. Click add field, then add a new field of type text formatted long. Enter the long label of walking and driving instructions and notice what happens. The machine name is not typed out as long as the label text. The machine name has a hard limit in the amount of characters in its name. Keep the defaults, making sure you have selected a new field type of type text formatted long, then click save and continue. 
The defaults are fine. Click Save Field Settings. Copy and paste the help text. Click Save Settings. Nice. We are almost completed for now. Only one more field to add. This time, it is waterfall height of type number integer. Back on your Drupal site, go ahead and click Add Field. Add a new field of type number integer. Enter the label of waterfall height. Click Save and Continue. Keep the field settings defaults. As we did with the hike duration field, let's also slightly change the label to include meters, like so. Now, you could provide alternative units if you wish, but the data I was provided with was in meters, so for efficiency, I'll keep the waterfall height in meters. The help text also reinforces this unit of measurement. Also, let's go ahead and enter meters as the suffix of this field. Again, we'll see how this works in just a bit. When you are ready, click Save Settings. Fantastic! Well done on adding the basic fields required of our waterfall data model. Remember, each field has a field type, which determines its global field settings and the field's content editor settings. Each field has a label and a machine name. You can reuse existing fields like we did with the field underscore image, and you can create new fields like we did with the rest of these fields. In upcoming videos, we will create actual waterfall content and eventually, we will add fields for media types and taxonomies after we learn more about those concepts. I'll see you again soon. Happy learning!